Is there voltage on a neutral? It depends. It depends on the context of your question, how picky you are being with the definitions. And that's it. I thought I had three things. Let's get into it. So 100% you can detect small voltages neutral to ground. Not in a fault situation. Under the proper circumstances of everything working properly. Okay, let's just show you the readings so we know what we're talking about as we move forward. This meter is propped up so we can read it. One lead on the neutral, one lead on the ground. In this situation, this panel is giving us one tenth of a volt. But if I turn on this breaker, which turns on a hot plate, we now have very nearly a full volt. So when I'm answering a question, I sometimes will say, yeah, there's a difference there, but it's had, it has no practical purpose to electricians. Something electrical engineers will detect and worry about. My normal carry around meter in my bag won't even detect it. So I want to talk about what that difference can do, but I want to preface it. When you're dealing with electricity, anything can shock you. Any connection can malfunction and change its status and present a shock hazard. So during service work, treat everything like a potential shock hazard. But now we're just talking about a properly functioning electrical panel. When properly functioning, the voltage difference between the neutral bar and the ground bar does not represent a shock hazard. It's not enough to shock you. It's not enough to power circuits. It's not enough to run a motor. It's, it's useless to electricians trying to build functioning circuits in a home. And in one video, I made the comment, it won't light a light bulb. And right after I made that comment, a commenter named Zanzan, or one of my followers named Zanzan, he made a demonstration. He just didn't say, hey, no, you're wrong. He built a demonstration to show he can light a light bulb between the ground pin and the neutral pin of a receptacle. Now, it's not practical what he did. He pushed everything to the extreme. He ran a space heater on a very long cord and had very sensitive light bulbs. But he did prove the point that you can light a light bulb neutral to ground. So I'll tag him. Go over and check that out if you want to see how he did it. So if under normal conditions, that is not a shock hazard and it can't power circuits. When do electricians have to worry about that voltage? With bonding and grounding. That voltage is the very driver that causes the problems if you do not separate grounds and neutrals in your sub panels. So if we have one volt difference between neutral to ground, that's not really enough to shock you. That's not really enough to be useful for powering circuits. But it is enough that if the connection between these two is a sufficiently low resistance, like say a ground wire or the bonding screw in, that resistance is low enough that that one volt will allow some of the amps that's on the neutral to now ride back on the ground to the main panel. Okay, I have three hot plates going, so I get 2.5 volts neutral to ground, and that me that's coming from 47 amps going on my neutral. What happens when I connect this jumper between neutral and ground? So I've installed that black jumper from neutral bar to ground bar. So now my volts are gone, and I have on my neutral 20 amps, and now on that jumper, I have 22 amps. What I'd planned to do at the end of the video was light a light bulb like Zanzan Zan did. And uh, I just ripped apart my shop. I do not own a light bulb that will light from the voltages I can create. So I'll tag Zanzan Zan in the video. Go check out his page and he'll you can see him light a light bulb between the neutral and the ground pin of a receptacle. All right, there it is. In future videos, I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing. In the context of the question or the topic of the video, I will address that voltage difference either as irrelevant or as crucial. Because if you're trying to explain bonding and grounding and you focus on that difference, you just confuse the topic sometimes. But if the topic is avoidable, avoiding objectionable current, then that difference is very important. So it's funny, I'll ride that gray area when it's appropriate for the video rather than going deep into a rabbit hole. And what happens when you ride the middle of a gray area in a video, you get attacked from both sides because everybody just likes to argue in the comments. But that's all right. It's fun and it's good for the algorithm. Unrelated, I just want to add... I want to thank Zanzan Zan for making that video because that's exactly why I started making videos. I was in the comment section saying, yaha, nah, -uh, yaha, nah, -uh, yaha, nah, -uh, and then I just said, you know what? I can show you what I'm trying to say and prove you wrong by building something. So <laughs> it's funny. Normally, you just want to get a code reference out of somebody to prove they're right. Zanzan Zan went right past code reference and right to, I'm going to build it. Uh, I just thought that was pretty cool. So thank you very much again.